How you doing? This is BK for ManfulWars.com, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide offline, teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and to help people worldwide offline locally discuss and share great info they find online as uh, better people making better places to live. Not just connecting with like minds on the internet, uh, a great uh, stepping stone to connecting with your neighbors, making sure you respect each other, uh, get uh, better politicians and better results by putting better ones in, uh, or by demanding more from the ones you currently have, as opposed to just sort of accepting what you get. So uh, check out manforwars.com for more, and check out the links below in the video description um, uh, for what we can do today about this current uh, COVID-19 pandemic, COVID-1984, uh, panic-demic, a coronavirus crisis, whatever, 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 right? Um, but this video is called uh, COVID-19 Plandemic, Why the World Can't Trust China, Italy, or Iran About the New Flu. Why the world can't trust China, Italy, or Iran about the new flu. And this is the new flu. I mean, before there was uh, SARS and MERS and swine flu and bird flu and uh, and so on. And, and this is the latest version of that type of get ready. There's a big flu that might kill everybody. And then uh, it doesn't. But, you know, we, we get all the systems ramped up to sort of um, uh, increase our control, depending on, on how you feel about the people behind this and, and who you think they might be. Uh, if you don't just assume everything's on the up and up, right? Now I'm going to show you uh, why we certainly can't trust China, Italy, and Iran when it comes to information about this flu, when it comes to our reactions, when it comes to the rest of the world, especially the West, um, you know, um, with respect to, to sort of what they're up to, right? So I'm going to just basically kind of go over here. Um, how did this uh, panic start, right? So first of all, it started uh, supposedly in China in Wuhan, maybe in a wet market, maybe at a biological lab, right? All sorts of, um, excuse me, his collar's never even. Anyway, um, you know, maybe either a bioweapons lab in Wuhan or maybe a wet market. Uh, maybe somebody ate a bat and they got it from a bat and then they spread it to everybody else, right? That's one of the working theories out there. And apparently what happened is China suppressed information about how dangerous this virus was, saying no human to human transmission, nothing to worry about, we got it under control, and because the communist Chinese government lies, and their own people fight against them, Hong Kong people fight against them, Taiwan is trying to uh, defend themselves against them, and the rest of the world has to uh, defend as well. We got to save the Chinese people, we got to save the Hong Kong and Taiwan people, and we got to save ourselves from the influence of communist China, because their regime is like the new Nazis on steroids, with way more people they've killed, way more people they've enslaved, and way more technology to make it easier than ever. It's like Hitler's wet dream, right? You can look into that more on, on your own if you'd like, um, and everyone should, by the way, because they are a huge threat. Um, but apparently, China suppressed info, and they put uh, Dr. Tedros, who's really a PhD in something else. He's not really a doctor, a medical doctor, but um, he was a communist in Ethiopia. He did evil stuff there. Uh, you can look into that. And uh, they put him in charge of the World Health Organization, right? And uh, the World Health Organization, part of the UN, part of the globalist international institutions that shouldn't be making policy and mostly should be running a Starbucks where other world leaders talk. But for some reason, you know, they're, you know, sort of dictating to a lot of the world's governments. And that's a huge mistake. I mean, we've got to escape and, and push to escape, um, you know, as, as part of escaping this mess. But basically, uh, China and their sort of puppet leader of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, um, you know, they apparently suppressed information in January, even though the outbreak started in uh, November, December in China, and uh, they were still saying, don't worry about it, no human to human transmission and so on, right? Um, and so that made the world delay and it made questions about that, uh, you know, uh, you know, sort of seem uh, stupid, right? Or seem racist. So you had people like uh, Speaker of the House, Democratic Speaker of the House in the US, Nancy Pelosi, going to a big uh, Chinatown festival in January or February saying, don't worry, everything's fine, don't be scared, uh, against Trump's travel bans, stopping flights from China, then later stopping flights, flights from Europe, right? And so apparently, you know, our response was supposed to be too slow to how bad this virus and this pandemic is. And then when, because it was too slow and because people supposedly started getting really sick and it was supposed to spread like crazy, um, you know, then we have to lock down. We have to rush like crazy. No, we waited too long. Everyone has to stay home for the next few weeks, the next few months. We waited too long. Oh my God, this is so crazy, right? And, um, and some of the numbers, um, you know, they were using, um, you know, are, 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 are based on numbers out of China and their response, even though 
China, as Tucker Carlson, one of the more honest mainstream news journalists on Fox News, and he's got his own show, The Tucker Carlson Show, he said, wait a second, if this thing is so, uh, uh, um, he said recently, if this virus is so infectious and spreads so fast, and it spreads not just six feet, maybe it spreads 27 feet, and blah, 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 and, and so on. He goes, how come it was mostly isolated to Wuhan? How come it didn't spread all over China? How come there weren't outbreaks in Beijing, in Shanghai, in Chengdu, in other places all over China, if, if it supposedly spreads like that, right? There's millions of people in Wuhan. There's 1.3 billion people in China. So why isn't it all over China? How come they could isolate it? And, 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 and even if they have authoritarian measures, it's still a virus, right? And we are using authoritarian measures and we are still supposed to be worried about this virus, right? So how come it didn't spread all over China? How come they just hung around in Wuhan and then they, you know, slowly did a bunch of stuff, locked a bunch of people down, did a bunch of evil things to people, drag them out of their houses, quarantine them, you know, weld them into their houses, blah, blah, blah. And then it was over. Then 30 days later, China's back to work. They're happy to make the world stuff, right? Whole bunch of corruption involved there, which, which you know, we've heard about. But that's basically how it started, right? And, uh, and also, Africa doesn't seem to care about this much. South America doesn't seem to care about this much. That's also weird. Some countries do, some pockets here and there. But by and large, eh, you know, it's not a huge concern based on, on the, you know, what I've read about, about this sort of thing. And I think we're all paying attention to this stuff. So that's how it started, right? That's how it started. That's the official thing, right? They, you know, suppressed info about it. It's supposed to be really horrible. Um, and then, uh, you know, don't say anything. That's racist. And then, oh my God, we're too late. Now we have to take extra, you know, martial law, crackdown, quarantine measures because we were too late to stop this crazy virus that's spreading everywhere and, and will kill everyone if we don't all wash our hands, stay away from each other and stay home. There could be more to do about that, about this when it comes to a major health crisis and a flu. And we've dealt with flus before, but that's the official advice, right? So that's how it started, right? So that's point number one. The second point is, what was the world like? You know, what was the world like just, you know, three, four, five, six months ago, right? What was the actual, what was the world like? Now the world's changed. Sometimes you're saying it's changed forever. You know, we'll never go back, blah, 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 right? And that's some of the theories out there, right? What was the world like? Well, the world um, basically was seeing a rise in conservative nationalist populism, right? That's what it was, right? Conservatives try and preserve what works, right? To, these are the things we liked. This is our culture. This is our way of life. This is how we like to do things, right? And we want to keep that, right? We, we, we don't want to lose that, right? That's a more general conservative principle. Liberals try and change things uh, to make people happy. Conservatives try and preserve what works. This is what makes people happy. And this is what makes us productive and successful and free and so on. And liberals try and say, well, you know, we need to make some changes to make people happy, right? And when people are polite patriots and they respect each other and they, they, they kind of have their, their national customs for doing so and their cultural customs for doing so, it can actually be a healthy conversation, right? Because we can't be Luddites where we don't try anything new and then we're just stuck with, you know, you know the, the, the buggy whip, you know, and, you know, you can have people that are more innovative, more creative, more so on. They can often be more liberal. They're pushing to change things. So it can be a healthy conversation, but when that conversation is corrupted, You've got conservatives that don't really fight that hard to kind of preserve their way of life because they're supposed to lose, like the Washington generals. And you've got liberals controlled by globalists, super rich evil people above them who want an international, uh, um, uh, con who want international control of the world, central bankster mafias and so on, that say, no, we need to change this and change that and change this and change that. And here's your latest PC, politically correct or personal computer where personal computers getting our updates, what to say, what to do, how to act, what's cool, what's not, you know, is it black? Oh, not black. Is it African American? Is it African American? Is it this? Is it white? Is it was Caucasian? Is it, who are we supposed to hate? What are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to raise our little boys and girls to be little boys and girls? Or no, no, that's no good. But what if they want to switch? What if your boy wants to be a girl? Oh my God, give her all the old girly stuff girls like, right? What if your girl wants to be a boy? Oh my God, let him get dirty, climb and eat, destroy a tree, teach him to shoot a gun, right? But what if it's a real boy? You know, just wants to be a boy, good at being a boy. Eh, get, put him in a little gray bag. No blue clothes and, and, and guy stuff and little girl. No, no, put her in a little gray bag. No girly stuff that, that girls like and makes them good at being girls for other girls and guys and everyone to appreciate. No, right? So these are the sort of updates um, and that's a corruption of the process, right? Um, but anyway, so conservative uh, nationalist populism was on, was on the rise and li liberal globalist communism was in retreat. Right. The people were just going, no, this is bullshit. Like we know, you know, we don't have to be a shrill, bitchy idiot who, you know, can't think, hear, say or do anything different than anybody else and is scared to. 
right? We, we can be open-minded, we can respect each other, we can hear different things and think for ourselves, and that process was going on. So even the most shrill, bitchy idiots, right, that, that, that couldn't talk to people they disagreed with and then had trouble talking to each other, what if they disagree? They were like, eh, this is not the best way to live. Right? Are these people really Nazis or are these people people who are from here, care about here, want to save what makes here great and, uh, and improve on it and should we give them a chance? So that process was going on and um, there were protests worldwide. You get the yellow vests in France, you get the Hong Kong protesters against China is us whole. We know we look same, but those people as whole, communism, evil, right? And so on. Um, and, uh, and all over the world, there were protests against uh, government corruption and, and, and government overreach and so on. So that was going on, right? And all that's been shut down, right? And um, the same big government status who were losing before, the same bureaucracies that wanted to have weaker people uh, who need more government and more of their control, uh, and they make more money like parasites feeding off them, they're now back in charge um, as a result of this, uh, this pandemic, right? Um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> people were uh, enjoying uh, a great global economy, by and large, you know, most places in the world were boosted thanks to the U.S. economy and Trump's economy and Trump's the greatest economy in history. We had the greatest economy in the history of the world. And now it's shut down. Right. Um, and, and so people around the world were benefiting from that. And they were, you know, they were encouraged to push their own nationalist policies that protected their countries and their economies and their borders and their sovereignty. And so all of that was in play, right? And so the whole world was getting boosted by this sort of phenomena. And now, bang, shut down. Uh, people may starve to death. You may have, you know, uh, 2 million people is one UN estimate, could be way more than that. This year, starve to death, just starve, right? In the West, maybe you could, you know, borrow money from your parents. Maybe you could this, maybe you get a loan, maybe you get some welfare. In some parts of the world, they just die. There's no options, right? So even though millions might starve to death, they, the media is focused on the few thousand or a few hundred thousand that might die from the flu when every year many normally do, especially when they have pre-existing conditions. You already got cancer. You already got this. You're already really old. You're already half dead. And all of a sudden, something your body, a healthy body normally fights off can kill it. Whereas the rest of us sneeze for a couple of days, get some sleep, drink some water, take some vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin A, you know, whatever, whatever, and bang, right? And a lot of us, frankly, like myself, you know, I, I dealt with this seriously, tried to get really healthy, tried to get really sharp, sharpen my mind, sharpen my sword, right? And, um, and, and yeah, I feel great. I feel amazing because I've been looking at all this healthy stuff in case there's something serious about this. But more and more info is coming out that reveals it's bullshit from a variety of angles. And since we all got panicked and we all learned a lot and we all shared a lot because of this panic and you got experts, we got experts. You got doctors, we got second opinions because all that's taking place. A lot of us are waking up to this fraud right now. We need to wake everybody up so that we don't have panic stricken people freaking out on us when we are not panic stricken because we are wrong for not being panic stricken or for being able to have conversations about this. And they are right for being panic stricken, shrill bitchy idiots who make us, who make us all stay inside, wash our hands, stay away from people. And that's their solution, right? And to wait for the next government orders. So, um, <clears throat> so, you know, that was what the world was like and that's how it's changed more recently. Now, let me get to uh, China, right? And uh, China, and this is partly according to Steve Bannon, former Trump uh, advisor and, and campaign manager, excuse me. Um, he helped sort of focus Trump's message, um, you know, to help him win the election in uh, 2016 and become president in January of 2017 uh, before they had a bit of falling out. Although he's still a nationalist and populist, he goes around the world um, helping support nationalist and populist movements. He's very much against globalism against um, the international order where internationalists uh, above international institutions tell them what to do and they tell us what to do as opposed to democracies with the will of the people or republics with guaranteed individual rights or some combination where the people tell their politicians what to do and their politicians do it for the people and if you don't like them then you get better ones in there as opposed to central banksters globalists control these institutions, UN, WHO, etc., International Criminal Court, World Trade Organization, and so on, and they tell us what to do. So that's the sort of battle in, in, in broad strokes, right? And so Steve Bannon has talked about how China considers themselves a 5,000-year-old empire, right? 5,000-year-old empire. 
very much proud of their history. America's just 250 years old and other countries are, you know, um, are, are, are especially America, Canada, the sort of newer ones are just 150, 200 years old, 250 years old, right? But China is 5,000 years old and they've got a much longer view of history, right? It's like when you're young, you know, every year, the age from when you're four year old and you're an eight year old, you're radically different. But when you're 70 years old or 74 years old, and then you become 78 years old, there's not that much difference, right? You, you tend to have a longer view of history having lived more. So China as an empire is like that. And they think that their empire just hit a 100 year speed bump, right? Just the last century ah, got waylaid by communism and eh, this and that. Now have the perfect totalitarian communist capitalist hybrid replace the U.S., be the new world role model, lock everyone down with Chinese-style control systems and, uh, and, 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 and dominate the world that way, and then possibly, you know, hand it over to the U.N. or work with the U.N. to run the whole world, right, as part of this, uh, this conspiracy. So <clears throat> um, China, officially, officially, you can look this up yourself. I'm taking all this from notes, but I've seen all this stuff, and you can research this stuff on your own to verify it. Um, China wants to be back in charge. They've got their China 2025 plan, which means China officially wants to dominate most, sector, most sectors of the world's economy by 2025, right? So they want to dominate agriculture. They want to dominate trade. They want to dominate uh, technology. They want to dominate media. They want to, they want to dominate most sectors. They want to be the dominant player in the world by 2025, which is you know less than five years from now, right? And they've also got a China 2030 plan, which is a similar version of that, right? So you can look up those, right? Uh, they've also got their Belt and Road Initiative or Belt and Road Plan, Silk Road Plan, right? And that's where um, they basically want to uh, 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 spread out and create new trade routes, new trade uh, routes across uh, the world, right? And they're spreading through Asia, they're spreading through Africa, they're reaching through Europe, right? They have some sort of, sometimes they agree with Russia, sometimes they fight with Russia, right? But they are definitely expanding, right? And they have lots of U.S. dollars in other Western currency because we gave them a bunch of money to send us a bunch of stuff. And now they can use that money to buy us. They can buy our media. They can buy our resources. They can buy our ports. They can buy this. They can buy that, right? And that's what they've been doing. They can buy our real estate, right? Um, and so and so they're using a lot of those U.S. dollars and, and other sort of international currencies that are more trustworthy than the Chinese yuan um, to loan them to other countries and to put those countries under their control. So they're loaning African countries, they're loaning, you know, uh, Asian countries. Um, and then sometimes those countries have trouble paying them back and they say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Or South America, they say, don't worry about it. We'll just take your port, right? So you owe us, you know, X billion dollars, but you can't pay it. You can't pay the interest. You can't pay on time. No problem. We'll take this strategic port so we now own that port and any ships that want to pass through here have to pay us to use this shipping port, for example, right? And so, <clears throat> um, you know, they're expanding and they're trying to take over for the U.S. And they were actually built up by the United Nations uh, and the U.S. and British globalist allies, including George Bush Sr. back in the late 70s, for example, um, where they went to China in the late 70s and went, oh my God, look at you people, starvation everywhere, the communist revolution in the 1950s and 60s under Mao Zedong or Mao Zedong, um, you know, has said you collectivize everything, all the local towns successful, all the local farmers successful, all the people with their own little economic ecosystems where they would trade with each other. We are getting rid of all that. We are centralizing everything. We are centrally planning everything. And from this, you know, communist pyramid bureaucracy, this thing decides it, and this is what you do, and this is it, and it filters down to the bottom. And that created mass starvation, right? There was 50, 60 million people that the communists killed either in taking over or uh, starving or starving people. Because instead of having local farmers and local this and local that, instead of having smart people who didn't like communism, uh, they were either uh, 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 switched or, or, or jailed or killed, right? So they didn't have a bunch of smart people around and successful business people around because they were a threat to the, 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 uh, the, the proletarian revolution and the psychopaths at the top got a bunch of useful idiots below them to attack the successful people there who they were jealous of. Instead of those people creating businesses and opportunities, they said, nope, you are evil, you have too much, we all need to be equal, so they attacked them, right? And similar stuff is being promoted um, in the West and, and around the world as well, so we have to watch out for that um, because it's psychopaths and useful idiots and that's the international communist conspiracy, right? 
with central banking mafia at the top, they try and convince useful idiots to say, you know, once you destroy national governments, once you destroy religion and God, then people can't appeal to God anymore. They don't have any morals anymore. They don't have any inspiration anymore. Once you destroy the family, once you destroy gender, no more nice ladies and gents, everyone's comrade. Once you destroy this, once you destroy that, once you destroy it all, and you take down national governments, and there's no more capitalists, no more evil capitalists out there that want to make money and have big cars and big houses and rock and roll and blue jeans. Once you destroy all that, then the world will be equal. The world will be at peace. There will be no really rich people, right? And the people who push that are not the people at the bottom. They do as well. But the people that really push that and make that make this system something that people keep pushing, even though it's failed for a hundred years, right? It's failed in Russia, failed in China, failed in Cambodia, failed in Vietnam, failed in Cuba, failed in Venezuela. It's failed everywhere. So why is it still keep being pushed? Because the central banksters at the top are the psychopaths who want to push all their useful idiots, willful idiots, maybe a little sharper, and useful idiots at the bottom to push for this, right? Because they believe if you destroy everything, destroy everything that people like, and destroy everything that, that kind of divides us, makes us all equal, then, then you know we'll all be happy. But instead, we'll all be under their control. So that version of what happened in China is happening worldwide, and we got to battle against that. Um, <clears throat> but so since the 70s, the uh, UN and globalists have built up China to um to be um to be you know what it is today right and they help get china into the world trade organization give them most favored nation status consider them a developing world to the point where they still get foreign aid today they get foreign aid from canada canada a country of 37 million people sends china foreign aid despite the fact that china is the second richest country in the world behind the us they are the second richest country and canada might be like the 10th or 15th richest country right canada goes, oh, poor China, developing country, here, here's another $50 billion. So what? Right? So that's part of the corruption of the system that uh, people above China are involved in. And they set up China to take over for the U.S., as I mentioned, and they basically practice their control systems on 1 billion people, right? 1 billion people, biometrics, tracked and searched and drugged and chipped, brainwashed, blah, 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 no more men and women, all business, all this and that, Communist Party in charge, don't say anything else, social media, social credit scores, send the wrong tweet, uh, get fined, money directly out of your bank account, uh, all of a sudden bus pass doesn't work. Why? Because sent the wrong tweet, you know, and, and so you're not allowed to go anywhere unless you, if, if you say or do the wrong things, right? So those control systems were practiced on China, and now the globalists are saying, okay, worked on a billion people. You think it'll work on the other six billion? That's a pretty good number. You know, you get a poll, poll for a fo uh, for who you're going to vote for. They call, you know, a few hundred people or a thousand, two thousand people, and they say this many people want planning on vote for Trump. This many people plan on vote for Hillary, and we're supposed to make decisions based on that, right? But they actually practiced on a billion people, and so now they can export that to the entire world. So that is what they're trying to do now. Um, now, when it comes to this. Um, Trump was in a trade war with China, right? Trump was like, they've taken advantage of us. It's not all their fault because, you know, our own politicians let them take advantage of us and sign these horrible deals where they put tariffs on U.S. goods. So if U.S. goods get shipped to China, they slap a 20% more cost on them and say, well, you can buy American goods, but it's going to cost you 20, 30% more. But then China sends goods to America and no tariffs. So China can dominate uh, America in manufacturing and the, and the world and the West in general, right? Plus China, no human rights standards, no labor standards, no pollution standards, and slave labor and, and, and prison camps where people make stuff for us. So, you know, they, there's you know, all that. So, so Trump was pushing back against that, in fairness, right? And he kept the U.S. out of the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, giant trade deal, hamstring in their policies, uh, Paris Climate Accords, pay carbon taxes to the globalist UN, uh, UN Global Compact for Migration, don't control your borders anymore. People can leave any country where they're not happy and they can go to any country, you know, to destabilize these countries, to lower wages as more people come in and chasing the, the available jobs and money. And, um, and, 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 and the rich people in those countries like it because they can pay people less because there's more people looking for jobs, right? So, so Trump was kind of fighting that uh, in, in many ways, right? So um, it looks like China hit back with the flu, right? Um, they, um, they, 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 scared, they scared us and, uh, and, and they got backed up by the globalists and their deep state allies, which is 
these evil people and then the bureaucracy, the politicians come and go, but the people that are in government, the people that are working in the Department of Education, the Department of Agriculture, uh, the State Department of different countries, they're there for years and they can get corrupted and they're lifers, 20, 30, 40 year politicians. So they can be manipulated and, and they can push an agenda even if the politicians change and a left wing one comes in, it's more big government, but a right wing comes in, wants to cut taxes, regulations, government, they can go back and forth. But the people in the deep state, in the bureaucracy, they can keep pushing an agenda. So it looks like China struck back uh, with this flu by saying, here it is, and, and here's the whole narrative. It's really bad, but don't say anything. And World Health Organization, don't say anything if it's really bad. And then some stuff leaks out of China where they're treating the people horribly, but that was going on before this anyway, right? And they tie that to this flu. And then we all go, oh my God, the numbers in China, the this and that, it's viral. We can't really trust them. The Wuhan market, the bat flu, the Kung flu, the this flu, the that flu. Uh, Wuhan clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Wuhan, got you all in check, you know, to uh, uh, paraphrase the Busta Rhymes, Wuha song, right? And so... <clears throat> Backed up by the, the globalist media allies, the super rich evil people that control the handful of people that control the media in most countries, the mainstream media, and the corrupting of those governments who kind of have been sort of pushing for this agenda and pro-China in a lot of ways and ignoring their human rights abuses and whatnot, right? Um, this looks like China striking back. So a lot of that information out of China, right, is not trustworthy, as we, as we know, or as we should. Right. But but it's even it's a bigger geopolitical thing than that, where China would easily be behind this to say, OK, America, you know, OK, American, stupid American. You want to take over? You want to put tariffs on our goods? You want to take, tell people don't manufacture there? Don't treat people well? Here you go. We have really evil flu. <gasps> look what flu can do. Look what flu did to people in China. <gasps> oh, my God. Look what flu going to do to you. Right. So you destroy your economy. We don't even have to do it. You destroy it. You shut everything down. You shut everyone in their houses. You destroy your goddamn economy, right? So that is, is, is likely what China is doing in the great game, as the British Empire used to call it, the great game of international geopolitics where things aren't what they seem, uh, seem and, uh, and, and everything that happens in politics is not an accident, right? So this whole, it's nothing, react late, have to do way too much, oh my God, we're all gonna die because we reacted late, that's part of a strategy. That's part of a geopolitical game. That's not them people being straight up with us, right? That's a narrative that we are all supposed to adopt. We were like, we were too late. We should have stopped things in January and February. Now it's too late. We all might die from the flu. We better stay home and stay away from each other. Wash your hands, stay away from each other and stay home all the time, right? So that's part of the game. And knowing this and having this narrative play out like this, you can either take it at face value or you can go, wait a minute, who's behind this? And what do they have to benefit? What do they have to, you know, key bono, who benefits, right? Um, Latin for who benefits, right? China benefits from this, right? Which is also partly why maybe it was just spreading in Wuhan and maybe it didn't spread to the rest of China because maybe it's bullshit, right? On a number of levels. And you can research that uh, as well. But I'll get to Italy right now. So what about Italy? Italy, Italy, we love Italy, right? Well, <clears throat> listen, I love Italy. I, I've, I've been to Italy, right, briefly. I was there for a week, and I was in Greece for like three weeks or whatever, and uh, I had a great time, right? Bought some nice ties and, and, and had some nice food, met some nice people, and, and did nice things, right? But, you know, like the rest of the world, you know, uh, Italy's changed a lot. The whole world's changed a lot since I was there many years ago. And Italy recently had a populist named Salvini, who was a more conservative nationalist populist, want to close the borders, want to protect their culture, was not a globalist, liberal communist, right? He was a conservative nationalist populist, and he was in there, and he was one of the people more allied with Trump, where Trump goes, America first, you know, and Salvini goes, Italy first. We're not taking in these people from overseas. No offense. We try to help them be good populist nationalists too. Build up your own country. Don't you come here, right? You know, we have to take care of our own people. We have our own people. We have our homeless people. We have our kids starving. We need the money for the Italy, right? So he was that kind of guy, right? But he lost. He lost, you know, thanks to crushing media support, the same people that attacked Trump, but a lot more patriots in America and patriot media and so on, and a lot more guns and a lot more action and a lot more information. And so, you know, even if Trump's attacked every day in the media, 
there's a lot of people that can defend him, and there's you know uh, 50 mainstream media organizations attacking him, and there's 50,000 different patriot organizations trying to defend him in different ways, right? So it's an ongoing battle for the heart and mind and soul of the people in America and people around the world in fights like this. Italy does not have that as much, right? They don't have their, that's it, gold guns and Bibles, take mine from my cold dead fingers. Like they don't have, and they don't have the, the same independent media support. Some, but not nearly what it is in the U.S. So Salvini got in because, you know, people were sick of, of the bullshit, but then the media attacked the people with more bullshit, and then Salvini got kicked out, right? Or maybe they stole the election or whatever. And he lost to a communist coalition, a communist coalition, socialist communist coalition, leftist socialist communist coalition. So that's who's currently running Italy. So you cannot trust the people running Italy because communists, as part of the international communist conspiracy, will lie, cheat, steal, and murder because it advances the bigger goal, right? So the normal values, normal religious values, normal human values, all that sort of thing is kind of gone as this army of uh, useful idiots and Antifa-style commie zombies working for psychopaths and sellouts. Um, you know, they, you know, um, they, they're prepared to do and say anything to advance the bigger communist agenda because they are part of, of pushing for a global communism, right? Which is the dream of communists worldwide. Communists don't like, well, yeah, Russia's communist. That was, they were communists. China's communist. It's a billion people. That's great. But America's still there. They're still capitalist. Only when, and, and even if communism's failing in Russia, it failed in Russia, failing in China, failing in Venezuela, their, their, their idea, and I've talked to communists, this is what they say. They say, yeah, yeah, it's not perfect in Cuba. It's not perfect here. Not per but once the whole world is communist and everybody's equal and we have the resources, we can share them equally and, and you don't, there's no rich people, nobody to be jealous of, we're all happy, then it'll work, right? And that's the original Karl Marx idea was that, no, the whole world has to be communist. If you've got a few capitalist countries doing what they want, then that's, that's what the communists have to fight to destroy. Right. So that's there. That's the idea. Um, so, um, you know, so Italy and the communist government of Italy will lie and cheat and steal and murder as part of that. Right. And they made deals with China. Right. They made deals with China to kind of cozy up with China. Right. And so Italy and China are working together. So you can't trust Italy like you like Italy and you like Italian food and Italian people and whatever. You got to understand that the government of Italy is now communist and they are working with communist China. Right. They made deals with communist China to bring in a bunch of slave labor from China so that, you know, they could get people, Chinese slaves to make shoes there and they could stamp made in Italy on them, which is the most valuable, um, most valuable thing Italy has. Olive oil made in Italy, fine Italian leather shoes made in Italy. Right. But they're made by Chinese slaves. Right? They're not even made by Italians. The idea is made in Italy. You're thinking some old Italian guy whose dad was a, a cobbler who made shoes, and his granddad was a cobbler who made shoes, and his great granddad was a cobbler who made shoes, and now you're getting these beautiful Italian shoes made in Italy that are in the Italian tradition that's made great leather Italian shoes for a few hundred years. Uh uh. No. Now made by Chinese slaves, but because in Italy, still get the stamp made in Italy on them. Right? And they say that, that, that um, you know, those people, those, those guest workers, um, you know, were, um, you know, uh, partly how the virus spread, right? Now, you can say that, you can hear that, you know, and you can say, yeah, that, that's it, right? These people are they're Chinese guest workers, slaves, you know, underpaid, paid less than Italians, um, you know, like other guest workers picking fruit and veggies or whatever in different countries. And, uh, and because they're from China, because many of them are from Wuhan or whatever, that is logical where these people from China would have the flu and they'd be carriers and they'd spread it or that's just a way of looking at it, right? That's just a, a story which helps push the narrative. It doesn't actually mean that's what happened. Does it make sense? Sure. But if you look into the rest of this stuff, you realize not necessarily. And if you look into what Italy's agenda is to destroy the U.S. and destroy the West as part of, you know, their communist bent, right? They could lie about all this stuff, right? And they, their own communist people, they're into not enough stuff, resources. You know, we're communists. We're not a uh, an optimistic abundance economy, right? Like in a more capitalist thing. No, don't worry about it. With technology and innovation and resources, you know, there's more and more for everyone, right? Under communism and under the globalist communism and under the leftist ideas, there's no resource shortages, scarcity. We don't have enough. 
if you're over 80 and you might die, we'll let you die, you know, because, hey, there's not enough health care for everyone else, as opposed to, no, 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 there's enough health care for everyone. We can't act like that right? We've got God would, wouldn't like it. We've got family wouldn't like it. We've got ladies and gentlemen wouldn't put up with it. We've got cute kids we're raising to be badasses and, and fine asses and whatever. And so no, right? But because they're communist, that's what they'll do, right? And so you can't trust the numbers coming out of Italy either. You can't trust all the propaganda coming out of Italy either because they will propagandize against their own people and that propaganda will be used against the rest of the world, right? Now, Italy is also part of the Belt and Road Initiative, right? They're also part of that initiative I told you about where China is, uh, excuse me, um, expanding uh, its influence around the world. Italy is signing on to that. Italy is signing on to the Huawei 5G towers. Italy is signing on to the sure, loan us some of U.S. dollars. We like that. And that we already have a big debt, but you loan us some money because you have lots of money. And we, uh, you know, pay us back and maybe we don't pay you back enough. So maybe you take a little bit of Italy, right? They're signing on to that, right? So if they're doing that stuff, if they're treating their people like shit, if they're saying we don't have enough health care for our old people, right? If they're saying that people live together with these families and these old people, and so the virus spreads fast, blah, 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 blah. Reasonable. And look, I believe some of this stuff early too. We just keep looking into it and going, wait a minute. There's a lot about this that's bullshit, right? And this is another um, uh, explanation of how this is probably bullshit, right? And so you can't trust Italy. That's what I'll leave you with. And you can look into this more on your own, right? Um, now, finally, as I said, China, Italy, and Iran, right? Iran is another country where they say, oh my God, crazy outbreaks in Iran. Not much in Iraq, nothing in Saudi Arabia. Dubai seems fine, right? Uh, Pakistan's doing all right, right? And what else is near there? You know, whatever the hell else is near there, right? Yeah, doing all right. Some countries aren't. Some countries are freaking out. Other countries doing all right, right? Um, but 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 what's what's up with Iran, right? Well, Iran, right, is certainly no ally and friend of the U.S. And the U.S. is very publicly no ally of Iran. So would they be encouraged to lie about this too, uh, to 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 inflate the numbers, to crack down on their own people for their own reasons, and then to go to the West and say, oh my God, we had two thousand new cases today, and then oh my God, we had five thousand new cases today, oh my God, we had a million new cases today. And how people in America and in Canada and in Europe and in other places go, oh my God, look what's going on in Iran. <gasps> this is, this thing's going crazy, right? But you can't trust Iran, right? And I'd like to trust Iran. Nothing against the, you know, uh, the average Joe and Jane Persian, right? They, a lot of them don't like their government either, right? A lot of people worldwide don't like their government. That's why we got to clean this crap out, right? Um, not let them take control of, of us, lock us down and say, you know, they need to keep control of us because uh, otherwise us stupid animals will kill each other with this flu. Right. Um, but, you know, Trump has publicly said that um, Iran is the worst state sponsor of terrorism in the world. They are the worst. They are the ones behind terrorist acts and terrorist groups around the world. Right. He's isolated Iran. He's trying to separate Iran from the rest of the Middle East. He's comfy with cool with Saudi Arabia, even though Saudi Arabia has been behind a lot of terrorism, supposedly, including the 9-11 hijackers, right? Um, including Osama bin Laden, who ended up in Afghanistan, but he was a Saudi, right? But because of the U.S.'s longstanding relationship with Saudi Arabia, delicate thing, Trump is kind of going, eh, you know what, with you, we'll try and be nice and, and change your mind. With Iran, it's different, right? And nothing against the Persian people, I think, but 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 he's he said that. And this is also because he's got a bunch of advisors around him who are advising him that Iran is the worst country in the world when it comes to sponsoring terrorism, right? Or might they be? You know, I don't trust any government for that matter, right? You know, certainly, you know, even Trump's government. I don't trust his government. They got a bunch of scumbags in there. He said he said to himself, he's got to drain the swamp. Well, he hasn't finished. So there's a bunch of swamp creatures there, right? So there are scumbags in governments worldwide, right? But when it comes to Iran and the U.S., it's like Iran could go, oh, really, Mr. Trump? You're trying to isolate us from the rest of the world? You're putting sanctions on us. You will not do business with countries that do business with us. You will sanction our country. You will not allow us to sell oil. You will not allow us to, our government, to succeed. Really, Mr. Trump? Okay, then maybe we will say screw you, right? And um, and so there are isolated sanctions. 
Um, you know, uh, Trump even killed their top general, one of their top generals, Qasem Soleimani, right, very publicly on TV. We have gotten Qasem Soleimani. He was a brutal murderer. He was a brutal killer. It's like they, they, just, they just whacked one of their top generals. What if Iran whacked Mark Esper, the head of the U.S. military, right, or one of his top generals, right? Would that be seen as an act of war, an act of terrorism, right, to go after a top general in another country's military publicly on TV, right? That's an act of war, right? So Trump did that to Iran, right? So Iran's, you know, Iran's obviously, Trump, America's much bigger. America's 6'5", 250 pounds, and Iran is, you know, 5'7", 170, right? So it's, might be able to get a few licks in, but if we really go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I'm going to get my ass kicked. It is what it is. There's a reason there's different weight classes in boxing and MMA and so on, right? We all know, right? So what's another way for Iran to strike back against America? And that is inflating the numbers when it comes to this flu, right? Um, and plus, um, the Iran is facing their own people rising up. So they get a chance to crack down on uh, their own people, right? Crack down on their own protests in Iran, lock their own people up, uh, wander around and find dissidents and take a blood test and say, you've got COVID-19. No, you seem perfectly healthy, but you might kill some other people. So go to jail, right? Um, you know, so they get a chance to crack down on their own people as, as like every other government does. They get they all get a chance to crack down on, on, on their own people as part of this uh, pandemic, right? So it's very good for governments, right? But Iran could just be inflating the numbers and saying, oh, okay, US, you sanction us, you isolate us. Here, take these numbers from Iran and use them to go fuck yourself and destroy your own economy, right? And that's what I think is happening when it comes to this pandemic. So um, I just wanted to break down the geopolitics of it, right? Because it's much bigger than just sort of, well, this news says this and this news said that and this study says this and this study says that. There's what's called the great game, as the British Empire said, where these geopolitical decisions have ripple effects. You are posturing all the time in international relations. And some of this posturing uh, is, I believe, what's going on right now and why all of us are caught up in it. China, mm, can't be trusted. Numbers, this and that, but really scary. But we're back to work in 30 days. We're happy to make you stuff, right? We're not always shutting down our country. We're, we're back to work, right? And so there you go, right? Italy, eh, that's the communist government, eh, close ties with China, eh, right? Iran, uh, enemy of the U.S., and so screw you, U.S., you know, you, you listen to what's happening here, and then you have your health advisors who want to, you know, lock down the U.S. economy as part of the globalist control, weaken U.S., West, America, destroy it, replace it with China, world role model, everyone copy China now, everyone copy their control systems, trap the whole world, feed them into the globalist wood chipper, have the globalist government, global government kind of control everybody, right? So that is, I think, a big part of what's going on here, as opposed to the day-to-day -day news we learn about, about how real is this? Is it 5G? Is it whatever? How infectious is it? You know, what do you have to do? You know, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff's important. But the bigger picture, I think, is important too, and I hope this sheds a bit of light on that. Um, and there you have it. Um, so anyway, um, BK for manforwars.com. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, use clips in, in, in whatever you think you'd like, and let me know if you'd like. Um, you can also check the uh, description below for more information about this. Uh, you can get in touch with questions, answers to work together, or financial support. Uh, otherwise, hope this helps, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.